a Plaguelands Media production. <laughs> hey everyone, this is Hugh from Plaguelands Media bringing you another graphic novel review today, so uh, cheers to that. Today I'll be looking at the Amazing Spider-Man Epic Collection. This is volume 17, covering 1986 and 1987. This is Craven's Last Hunt, a graphic novel or a story that I have been trying to get my hands on for years and years and years and I've had absolutely no luck. So I'm glad to find it in this Epic Collection. However, I will not be talking about Craven's Last Hunt today, and there'll be a reason for that, which you'll find out at the end of the video. I'm a Spider-Man fan. I wouldn't say I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. There are many other superheroes out there that I would kind of read over Spider-Man. Um, but I do enjoy a lot of the Spider-Man stories. I think Spider-Man has some of the most iconic villains next to Batman. That you can find in comic books. So um, this was a really fun read for me. I, I did enjoy it, I'm not going to lie. The art is fantastic. Um, the main point of this video is the first lot of stories that kind of cover uh, the Hobgoblin, some Wolverine team-ups, and ultimately, Spider-Man's Marriage to Mary Jane, which was uh, a book that I never actually got a chance to read. I did have The Wedding of Cyclops and Jean Grey um, in my collection back in the day, but never got the wedding issue of Spider-Man and Mary Jane. So that was uh, kind of an interesting read. Um, yeah, not much more to say about this, so we're just going to get right into the next episode of... Read a fucking book. 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 People. Okay, so this is the Amazing Spider-Man Epic Collection: Craven's Last Hunt. You can see this is Volume Seventeen which covers 1986 and 1987. All right. I have been looking for a copy of Craven's Last Hunt for ages. Couldn't find it in just a, a graphic novel. It's a six-issue story. Did find a copy at uh, my local comic book hobby store, the um, Fantastic Dice Cafe um, here in Seoul, uh, but it was only in Korean, so I uh, didn't purchase it. But this epic collection has exactly what I'm looking for. So let's let's go through this. Okay, we start with the Amazing Spider-Man Annual, the Iron Man of 2020, and this was a really interesting story. Um, this has kind of Iron Man going um, a little bit crazy. There's some time travel shenanigans and whatnot. And uh, he ends up basically going after Peter Parker. We have the black suit Spider-Man, which is always cool. And um, yeah, not a lot to say about this one. It was an interesting um kind of story but ultimately it's just like a one-off where iron man's kind of fighting different foes spider-man gets involved trying to save a kid and we ultimately it's it's one of those um stories where you know the old sci-fi bleak future um nothing really matters kind of a thing. The world still ends. The city is still destroyed no matter what he does. Then we get Spider-Man versus Wolverine. I absolutely loved this story. Um, so it involves Wolverine and a lot of his past, especially um, 
a fellow secret agent. Then we get Spidey, who is, you know, having his, his regular kind of Spidey troubles. J. Jonah Jameson wants to send him and Ned Leeds over to Berlin for a, um, for a story. Spider-Man uh, kisses Mary Jane, although they're just supposed to be friends, but Spidey's feeling a little conflicted at this point. Um, Wolverine is over in Berlin kind of looking for his former kind of colleague. He and Spidey kind of get into it a little bit. And when Spidey gets back to the hotel room, he discovers that his friend Ned Leeds has been murdered. Now, Ned Leeds is a very important character in the Spider-Man comics. Ned Leeds is a reporter for the Daily Bugle. He is the husband of Betty Ross, who was really Peter Parker's first love back in the day. She is J. Jonah Jameson's secretary. And having him killed off like this was an absolute shock. And I will explain why in a little while. Um, some people come in to kill Peter. Wolverine kind of gets involved. And as the story progresses, you discover that the person Wolverine's after is an, uh, an espionage agent who is being hunted by KGB assassins, but she is systematically killing off these assassins before they can kill her. However, she is wanted by a lot of the different um, world powers because of what she knows. They're all trying to kill her off. Wolverine basically tells Spider-Man to go home, meets up with her. They have their little lover's fling. Uh, some assassins kind of bust in on their dinner. Spider-Man jumps in and, and kind of breaks it up. And Wolverine's pissed off about this. Like, Wolverine is like, dude, you're way in over your fucking head. They track down the people that are trying to kill her, but she's gotten to them first. And she's systematically killed them off. So we see Wolverine meditating while Peter Parker having a sleepless night. Wolverine meets her in the cemetery and she's basically begging him, can you be the one to kill me? If the KGB catches up with me, they're going to torture me. It's going to be painful. I don't want that. We see Wolverine snick his claws here. You think he's killed her, but he hasn't. He's just punched her in the stomach. He's held back. Spider-Man, of course, misconstrues the whole thing. They go into, uh, they go into battle. Wolverine um, realizes that Spider-Man is really not holding back. And uh, when we get the helicopters come, a bright light shines on them. Wolverine hides. Spider-Man is there. A hand touches him on the shoulder. And Spider-Man turns around and fucking punches whoever it is. It's the woman. And Spider-Man has ultimately killed her with his punch. Now, Spider-Man didn't know it was her. But she knew after watching Spider-Man fight Wolverine that if she snuck up behind him, he wouldn't hold back. So this was basically her suicide, which Wolverine realizes, but Spider-Man still has a hard time coming to terms with it. Even as Wolverine gets them across the border and gets Spidey on a plane with a fake passport, he still can't forget that one punch that he gave her. Mary Jane comes to his apartment when he gets back and she says, are we still friends? And he, Peter Parker's like, yeah, I really need a friend right now. This was a top-notch story that just shows you when it comes to Spider-Man and Wolverine and the whole espionage thing, how quickly Spider-Man can get in over his head. It was really, really well done. Now we're going to reveal who the Hobgoblin is. So we have uh, this guy who wants the Hobgoblin dead. And this dude is like, yeah, no problem. Let me make a phone call. They're at the airport. We see the Daily Bugle stuff here. We have Betty. We have J. Jonah Jameson. We have Robbie, Peter Parker. And they're bringing Ned Leeds' body back. Spider-Man's spidey sense goes off. And he sees the Hobgoblin, but the Hobgoblin really doesn't do anything. 
Now we have uh, this uh, broker guy meeting with the kingpin. Uh, the kingpin is getting a bit pissed off, as the kingpin is wont to do. And Peter goes to Betty's apartment to basically just try and console her. He sees, or Flash Thompson sees him. Flash Thompson used to be the bully that would beat up on Spider-Man. Peter Parker and Flash settled things out. They became friends, but Flash Thompson got set up as the Hobgoblin, and now he's kind of down in the dumps. We meet the Rose here. The Rose is a very interesting character, um, which you'll find out about in the next issue, of course. The Rose gets attacked by the Hobgoblin, and the Rose's uh, men are subsequently murdered. His best friends, basically. Um, Wilson Fisk takes out one of his henchmen who fucked him up, who did wrong, and then we see that, um, we find out, actually, that the Hobgoblin himself was Ned Leeds. Um, Ned Leeds, the... Wilson Fisk, the kingpin, gave Spider-Man the proof that Ned Leeds was in fact a hobgoblin. So in Berlin, he is subsequently killed and his hobgoblin uniform taken. Spider-Man doesn't actually believe this, but the kingpin is like, it's true. Now, I'm going to stop here for a moment. This was really, really controversial. For the longest time, nobody knew who the hobgoblin actually was. And it was set up to be another character. Uh, I believe that character was Roderick Kingsley. And then at the last minute, it was changed to Ned Leeds, which makes no fucking sense. In the scheme of Spider-Man, this makes no fucking sense. But it's comic books. It is what it is. So... The Hobgoblin and Spider-Man fight, of course. And Spider-Man doesn't understand if Ned Leeds was the Hobgoblin, who the fuck is this Hobgoblin? And uh, we see, um, I believe that's Flash Thompson, who the Hobgoblin threw a pumpkin bomb and Flash Thompson caught it and threw it back at him. And there we go. Web of Spider-Man, Wolverine comes back because they're at the funeral of Ned Leeds. Uh, this is Richard Fisk, Wilson Fisk's son, who is there um, kind of watching from a distance. We don't know why. Our reporters go to confront Richard Fisk, but he makes his escape with the help of his good friend. And they're talking about the Rose and the Hobgoblin. We find out that uh, Richard Fisk was, in fact, the Rose, uh, this, this crime lord. People bust in to... Um, Roderick Kingsley's office, they try to kill him, but they are ultimately unsuccessful. The Rose is once again attacked by the Hobgoblin, while the, Hobgob uh, while the Rose's uh, friend is going through and looking at all of, the, all of Ned Leeds' Hobgoblin hideouts to see if there was any information that could trace it back to the Rose. So we think there is a connection there. Wolverine catches up with Peter Parker, knows he's Spider-Man, of course. They get confronted by a gang, and um, Wolverine is like, come on, kid, you got to fight. And Peter Parker's like, nah, I'm, I'm fucking out of this. Um, the Hobgoblin is chasing the Rose's friend, Richard, Fris Richard Fisk's friend. Spider-Man ultimately gets his shit together and goes and helps Wolverine, but... Hobgoblin manages to shoot out the tire of Richard's friend who goes into the lake and they cannot revive him. 
or they cannot uh, get him. So Richard Fisk is like, my best friend is dead. Fuck this shit. I'm outie. He goes to a priest and confesses uh, all of his crimes to this priest. Basically explains that he wanted to get out from under the shadow of his father. He thought his father's criminal organization was awful. He kept getting followed by this reporter, Ned Leeds. And ultimately, after a while, um, he decides that, you know, we can stop the kingpin. Ned decides we can stop the kingpin with this old Green Goblin technology that I stumbled across. So I'll be the Hobgoblin. You have to make yourself an identity, which he does, the Rose. And together we will topple the criminal organization, but Ned gets a little bit too power hungry and um, Wilson Fisk starts to just go completely apeshit focusing on Matt Murdock. This is where um, we get the, the story where Karen Page sells Matt Murdock's daredevil identity to Wilson Fisk. So Wilson manages to take down the Daredevil by destroying Matt Murdock, um, which is a fantastic uh, story. I highly recommend you go and track that one down. Um, we find out that the Kingpin's wife wants out. He lets her go, but ultimately brings her back um, all drugged up. The son finds out about it, um, goes kind of crazy. The priest is like, Jesus Christ, dude, what the fuck, man? And when he goes to confront him, Richard Fisk has left. He realizes he cannot beat his father, so he joins his father in the end. This, I didn't think this was going to be a good issue. Um, I don't think the Rose, I, well, I never thought the Rose was a particularly interesting character, but ultimately, great backstory. Hate the Ned Leeds as the Hobgoblin shit. Um, that never really um, resolves itself. At least not in this epic uh, collection. So now we have um, Spidey doing his Spidey stuff, helping people and whatnot. He talks to MJ. He talks to Aunt May. Um, Aunt May tells him that there is a church uh, jumble sale and your microscope must have been put there. Um, this is the microscope that May and Ben gave to Peter and got him into science. So Peter's very kind of heartbroken about this, but he's like, May's like, I'll call the church, let him know. Peter's like, no, no, I'll go down there and I'll sort it out. He goes down, talks to the father. The father tells him that um, it's a really great gift and it's going to bring in like maybe 30, 40 bucks. Peter's like, shit, I can't take that away from the orphans. At the same time, we've got this kind of group that is protecting this scepter, this religious icon that um, that uh, the church has brought in to kind of raise a bit of money at this kind of um, church fate, so to speak. Mary Jane is having some problems. She calls Aunt May to talk to Peter, but Peter isn't there. Um... The auction starts to go off, but someone robs uh, money from the church. So Peter does his Spider-Man thing to get it back, although he's kind of wanting to go to that auction because he doesn't want anyone else to get that microscope. He subdues the bad people, um, rescues a kid who has been taken by them, um, is about to go back to the auction when... Uh, He, he basically manages to um, retrieve everything. The, the gang fight, uh, stealing the money was a diversion because the, the gang leader got the scepter. He got everything back, manages to buy back his microscope, microscope. He goes to see Mary Jane with some food and ultimately pops the question, will you marry me? Now... Uh, at this point, I don't really get the Peter Parker-Mary Jane relationship. I mean, in the previous issues of this 
they were just friends. Um, so I don't really know what the dynamic is or what is going on here or why he popped the question. But he did. He popped the question. And what does she say? No. Ha <laughs> ha. Suck on that, dickhead. She has to go off to help her sister. She hasn't spoken to her sister in four years. Um, but that is something that she needs to do. At this point, we have a new spider slayer that um, kind of has been developed by Alastair Smythe. Now, those of you that are familiar with the Spider-Man animated series, you'll know that the Spider Slayers were introduced in the first season, episodes two and three. And we see Alastair Smythe uh, in those episodes. He's in a wheelchair, just like he is here. He blames um, Spider-Man for his injuries. Mary Jane is off to Pittsburgh to visit with her sister. When she gets to the house, she realizes her sister's not there, but her niece, uh, her nephews, sorry, are with a neighbor next door. Spider-Man is wondering, should I go to Pittsburgh or should I stick around while Smythe is revving up the Spider Slayer? We discover that Mary Jane's sister is in jail. We don't know exactly what for. The Spider Slayer attacks Spider-Man. Spider-Man manages, manages to subdue it with help from this construction worker who cuts off the tentacle with a, um, like a, a digger. Spider-Man thanks him, takes out the Spider Slayer, and is like, I have a choice. Do I go to Pittsburgh or do I hunt down where the Spider Slayer is coming from? Ultimately, he ends up going to Pittsburgh. He talks with Mary Jane, and that is the decision that he makes. Um, Alistair Smythe also goes to Pittsburgh, taking the Spider Slayer with him in various parts so he can reconstruct it there. Spidey gets his hotel room. He goes to see Mary Jane, and we see Mary Jane is with her father. Her father is just being an asshole, so Mary Jane kind of storms out. Um, her and Peter talk. She kind of reveals what's going on. Um, with her father, who is a thief, and her sister got roped into the scheme. Uh, Alistair Smythe reconstructs the Spider Slayer, which comes after Peter and Mary Jane. There is a battle. Peter ultimately uh, defeats the Spider Slayer. The father wants Mary Jane to do the job that her sister was supposed to do. Mary Jane is umming and ahhing about it, but ultimately she says yes. I'll do it, but she's actually in cahoots with the police who uh, come in and arrest him, and it's only a matter of time before her sister is released from prison. And Mary Jane, realizing that Peter is always there for her, ends the comic by saying, yes, I will marry you. Then we have the wedding issue. Now, there were two variant covers for this. You can see one with Peter as the groom, and one with Spider-Man as the groom. Uh, this was for uh, retailers and whatnot, kind of two variant covers. So we start with this brilliant opening, black suit Spidey going up against Electro, who has just been busted out of a prison van. Um, they have a fight, and he manages to subdue Electro and um, find some more criminals to basically subdue. And we get this whole idea through this entire issue that Peter's having doubts and Mary Jane is having doubts as well. Betty is in denial. She says, Ned and I will be at your wedding. And Pete's like, damn, that bitch gone crazy. Um, Mary Jane is basically hanging around with all of these really rich guys and doesn't really know like what is going on while Peter's lamenting about Gwen Stacy. Peter's starting to feel a little bit jealous. Um, one of the rich men sends, um, who by the, by the way, his name is Willie Smith. So make, make that what you will, um, sends Mary Jane a wedding dress. Um, Peter is about to break up with her. 
but then sees the wedding dress and decides not to. Flash Thompson throws Peter a bachelor party. Uh, Harry Osborn is there, while Mary Jane, it's a very subdued bachelor party. Mary Jane is having this huge shindig with all the rich people because she's a model. Um... Peter's having these nightmares that all the heroes turn into the villains at his wedding. And uh, Mary Jane is kind of continually being propositioned by all of these rich dudes. Why are you marrying him? Come with me to Paris. Mary Jane turns up at the wedding, but Peter isn't there. The wedding is on the steps of City Hall, but Peter is not there. She's starting to get worried, but Peter's like, sorry, I had a problem. They end up tying the knot. They are husband and wife. J. Jonah Jameson throws the wedding reception. Peter laments that he can't afford um, a honeymoon ticket. But Mary Jane is like, don't worry, my friend gave me these two first-class tickets to Paris and we're going to be staying in a villa and it's going to be wonderful. After the honeymoon, they get back to married life and wedded bliss. Okay, this issue was fucking boring as shit. One of the worst wedding issues I have ever read in my life. Nothing happens. Now, we come to the six-part Craven's Last Hunt. I am not going to go into this at this moment. I'm going to end this video here. And the reason being, I want to read Craven's Last Hunt, the comic. I want to read Craven's Last Hunt, the novelization. And I want to compare the two of them. So that is what I am going to do. So you'll have to wait for Craven's Last Hunt. We are going to end it with the wedding issue. Okay. What did I think of all of the issues that came before it? They were okay. Uh, they were fun. This is 80s Spider-Man. I'm more a fan of 90s Spider-Man. Um, you know, when things got all kinds of fucked up with the Clone Saga... And then, you know, 2000 Spider-Man and, and whatnot. But this was this was a fun read. We got some Electro action in that wedding issue. Um, the team-ups with Wolverine, that was really cool. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, ultimately this is, this is just the Amazing Spider-Man Epic Collection. Not much more to say about it. So, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos. But most importantly, stay safe. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And of course, read a fucking book, people.